And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. By now, you all should know that we have arrived at the times. The scripture said the gospel of the kingdom will be taught in all the kingdoms of this world as a witness to all nations. After the gospel of truth is heard, then the end will come. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The truth that is exploding all over the world have been happening for some time. Every day, Israelites are waking up, as well as some Gentiles that was deceived by the doctrines from the pagan church. Before we continue, I ask the Israelites whom the Most High have awakened for some time to have patience towards the Israelites who are waking up in this wave. Remember, before your knowledge increased about your identity and the lies in religion, you were once a newly awakened Israelite. Just because your knowledge have increased, it doesn't make you better than the newly awakened Israelites. Just because you believe you know the name of the Most High and the Messiah, as well as a few Hebrew words, it doesn't make you better. The scripture said in the book of Revelation that the Messiah have a name only he knows. The scriptures went on to say that on his vesture, the name that is written is the word of God. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Therefore my people shall know my name. Therefore they shall know in that day that I am he that doth speak. Behold, it is I. A great majority of Israelites believe they know the Messiah's name. The truth is, nobody knows the Messiah's name. Our father Jacob didn't know the Messiah's name when he appeared to Jacob as the angel of the Lord. When Jacob asked the angel of the Lord his name, the angel responded with, Why do you ask for my name? The angel didn't tell our father Jacob his name. He simply blessed Jacob and departed from him. The Messiah's name is a secret. In the book of Judges, when the Messiah appeared to our ancestor Manoah, the father to Samson, who is of the tribe of Dan, the angel of the Lord appeared to him to give him instructions concerning Samson when he was a child. Manoah asked the angel of the Lord for his name. The angel of the Lord responded with, Why do you ask for my name? The angel went on to say, His name is a secret. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? The angel of the Lord in the Old Testament times is the Messiah. That is how he appeared to our ancestors before he became flesh. He did not give Jacob and Manoah his name. The Messiah revealed that his name is a secret. The book of Revelation confirmed his name to be a secret when it said that he had a name no one knows but himself. The scripture went on to say the word of God was on his vesture. Today in the awakening, we have Israelites condemning others for not using the names they believe is the Messiah's name. Remember, the Messiah came in the Father's name, not his own name. That is why so many have accepted the Messiah that came in his own name. I've heard countless names given to the Messiah throughout the awakening, as well as to the Father. Majority of Israelites cannot agree on a name, but they get upset when some of us refer to the Father as the Most High. To the Israelites who dislike my methods on this channel, 
You're free to go where you feel your spirit will get the nourishment it needs to grow spiritually. The times is of the essence. You're not a prisoner. You're free to go. This channel caters to all Israelites and Gentiles, regardless of their maturity in their spiritual journey. If you don't like certain words I use, free yourself from this channel. Go to the channels that feed your spirit the way you like. You're not bound here. The scripture said the most high will restore our language and give us a pure language. But then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Some Israelites need to get their priorities in order. While you're worried about the heathen's language that are full of curses, what about the curses you're speaking over your own people? How is your heart? The time have come for some Israelites to work out their own salvation and stop trying to work out somebody else's salvation for them. Religion taught many to rely on pastors and high-level workers of iniquity. Your pastors can't save you. Everyone has to establish their own personal relationship with the Father. The sooner some Israelites realize it's a personal relationship and not a one-size-fits-all, then they'll take the time to remove the beam out of their eyes. Every day, Israelites and Gentiles are waking up. We should celebrate every time one Israelite or Gentile awaken from their slumber and return to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. We should be inspired by the angels who rejoice in the heavens when one sinner repent. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Israelites, don't allow the spirit of pride to deceive you into exalting yourself over anyone. Let me remind my people that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of the Most High. Some Israelites need to deal with the beam in their eyes that is blinding them. That way you can see better to help your brothers and sisters remove the speck from their eyes. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? How wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. Some Israelites who have awakened for some time feel as if they know it all. The best advice I can give to you is to keep a teachable spirit, as well as having a humble spirit. The true awakening is about repentance, not a competition. Repentance should be a part of your daily routine. The spirit of pride have caused many Israelites to lose their way. The Most High have a way of dealing with the prideful. The downfall of Satan should be a testimony to some of you. When Lucifer wanted the Godhead for himself, Lucifer said in his heart that he would sit on the mount of the congregation on the sides of the north. He said he would place his throne above the stars of God and be like the Most High. The Father said to him, he will descend into hell, into the sides of the pits. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Israelites, don't let the spirit of pride mislead you. We have come too far to allow the Satans to rob us of our glory. Listen to the scriptures in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. Humble yourselves, repent, and turn from your wicked ways. We need the Father to hear our prayers to heal our land. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. The truth that is spreading is truly piercing many spirits. The truth is either saving lives or judging the hearts and minds of the wicked. Israelites, if the truth is piercing your spirit to bring forth change, let the Most High do the good work in you to elevate you spiritually. Stop fighting the Father and allow the Most High to renew your mind. Now that the truth is uncovering the lies the Gentiles and heathens have told in the beast culture, 
Israelites, it's very important for you to understand the mindset of the Gentiles that are processing the fact that they have inherited lies, as well as the heathens who are raging. A few weeks ago, I told you who the Gentiles are in the scriptures. The Gentiles are all the indigenous black bloodlines the scriptures talk about. Every nation in the scriptures are what the people who rule over us label black. The Shemites, the Hamites, and Japheth children are all indigenous black people. When the sons of Noah were multiplying on the earth, they took wives and husbands amongst themselves. The earth was repopulated by Noah's sons and their wives. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. The Most High gave everything into the hands of Noah and his sons on earth. Every bloodline's foundation starts with the indigenous black people. No bloodline can continue without its root. If a bloodline becomes whited out, that bloodline no longer exists. The tares whom the Most High is separating from the wheat at this time mingled themselves with the wheat. Through the tares mingling themselves with the wheat, it brought forth confusion of faces. If Israelites knew how the Most High established bloodlines, the tares that mingled themselves with the wheat would stick out like a sore thumb. Because many people reason with the carnal mind, they cannot see or understand the truth the Most High is revealing at this time. Israelites, wisdom is the principal thing. Get wisdom. But with all the wisdom you obtain, make sure to get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. You can have all the wisdom and knowledge in the world. If the Most High don't give you understanding, the wisdom obtained is fertile. For it is the Most High, the Father, that gives understanding. Many Israelites have obtained great wisdom from the awakening. However, many Israelites refuse to seek the face of the Father to get understanding. That is why some Israelites are assigning the tares, bloodlines that don't belong to them. The sooner black people realize that they are the root to every bloodline in the scriptures, they will stop trying to be accepted by the tares. They will claim their legacy and heritage. As the Gentiles and Israelites return to their heritage and no longer claim the identity given to them by the seed of the fallen, it will expose the European deception. The European heritage is used to conceal the identity of the people that claim the land of the north as their origin and heritage. Everyone should know that the Most High gave to Japheth and his children the land of the north for a possession forever. This is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever five great islands and a great land in the north but it is cold and the land of ham is hot and the land of shem is neither hot nor cold but it is a blended cold and heat the rightful owners of the land of the north are the children of japheth today the descendants of japheth are not in control of the land the most high gave to them for a possession Matter of fact, none of the descendants to Noah's sons alive today are in control of the land given to them for a possession by the Most High. The seed of the fallen and their children have taken the lands through colonization. The tares planted on those lands are the default to the new nations created by the seed of the fallen and the indigenous black people who entangled themselves with them. The modern day countries like Germany, Italy, France, Poland, and etc. that are in the land of the north are new civilizations that was formed on the land that belonged to Japheth in the north. The foundation to those nations started through colonization. If those nations were of Japheth bloodline, their land would be called after the names of the sons of Japheth, like Magog, Tubal, and the other sons of Japheth until this day. Because the people who have stolen the land are not descendants of Japheth or any of Noah's sons, they rename those regions after their idol gods. There's a prophecy in the scriptures that talk about Gog, a principality that ruled in the land of Magog. 
And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Some Israelites in the other awakening are assigning Gog to Magog the son of Japheth. Gog is not Japheth's son, Magog. Gog is a spiritual being, a principality that rule in the land of Magog. Remember, there are principalities ruling in every nation. That is why the scriptures say we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Also, just because the workers of iniquity change the names to the land that they have stolen through colonization, the scriptures will continue to refer to the land by its original name. Just because the seed of the fallen have changed the names, it doesn't mean the scriptures will follow. The Most High have the final say. Only the Israelites and Gentiles that are seeking the face of the Most High will understand the scriptures. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The promised land is called the land of Canaan. It will always be called the land of Canaan. You won't find Spain in the scriptures. Spain is a name given by the people who stole the land. They created a new civilization while keeping some of the elements of the indigenous culture to claim the identity of the indigenous black people who dwell there. Today, some Israelites select a region in the land of the north they believe belonged to Magog, assign the modern people living on that land to the bloodline of Magog. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to have understanding when dealing with the scriptures. It's important for you to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Israelites, the time have come for you to shift from a religious perspective to a spiritual lens. If you continue to allow the carnal mind to lead you, the tares will seize everything that belongs to you. That's exactly what the children of disobedience did. They took everything, including the identity of the indigenous black people all over the world. The gospel of the kingdom, the truth that must be heard in all the nations, are exposing all the secrets and everything hidden. As the truth caused many Gentiles to rage, Israelites, we have to be vigilant more now than ever. The Most High will humble the Gentiles with truth. The Gentiles will try to find ways to deceive you despite of the truth. Israelites, know that the Gentiles know exactly what is going on. That is why some are trying to find ways to shame you into allowing them to continue with their lies. It was prophesied that we would forget who we are. It was also prophesied that in the land of our captivity, we would start to remember ourselves. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. The book of Baruch is one of many books that was removed from the Bible by the high-level workers of iniquity. Just as it states in the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30, that in the land of our captivity, we would start to remember ourselves, the awakening is the prophecy in the book of Baruch coming to pass. Some Israelites are starting to remember themselves in the land of their captivity. With the Israelites remembering themselves, the awakening is a threat to the Gentiles that believe they have replaced us through spiritual Israel, as well as to the heathens who have stolen our heritage and live as the descendants of the Israelites under the name of Israeli and Jew. The Gentiles never forgot who they are. If you ask a Gentile about their family, they can tell you about their family's culture, heritage for multiple generations. Israelites, it's important for you to know that the Gentiles never forgot their heritage. They know exactly who they are, and they know who you are. That is why the truth is a witness to all nations instead of deliverance for the nations. The scripture said that the truth is meant to make us free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
Have you noticed the scripture said the truth is a witness to all nations instead of saying the truth would be deliverance for the nations who hear the truth? The Gentile nations that conspired against us know what they have done. To those who are hearing the truth and believing the truth, the truth is making us free. We are being freed by the mental and physical slavery put upon us by the Gentiles. When we hear the truth of the words of the Most High, it sets us free because we spent our entire life in bondage in the land of our captivity. The promises the Most High made to save us are starting to come to pass. Majority of Israelites are waiting for redemption. The scripture said, when the signs of the times are making themselves known, we should lift up our heads because our redemption is near. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. The gospel of truth that is spreading throughout the nations is good news for us. The lies that buried our history are being exposed. When the unrepented Gentiles hear the truth, it's a sword that is judging them and their nations. The Gentiles are used to being pacified in religion. They're used to hearing God will save them. Their sins are forgiven and they will make it to heaven despite of the way they live their life in this world. Their God promised them salvation regardless of the evil in their heart. The Satans deceive many Gentiles into believing that when the day of the Lord happened, they will escape through the rapture. The Satans have deceived many Israelites and Gentiles through false doctrines. If the Gentiles take the time to read the scriptures, they will know that the word of God will come after the tribulation. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. When the Messiah comes back, he will redeem his people to put them back on their land. While the synagogue of Satan deceived many Gentiles into believing they will escape before the tribulation, a lot of Gentiles and Israelites will be surprised when the men of sin, the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet, make his appearance and they are still here. The so-called rapture didn't happen. When the men of sin comes, the great tribulation begins. How will your faith be tested if you're rescued before the tribulation? The Messiah said, you will be hated for his name's sake. How will the scriptures be fulfilled if you're raptured before the tribulation? The delusion upon the Gentiles and on the Israelites who cleave to the Gentiles is very strong. The Most High exposed the imposters proclaiming to be his people. The Gentiles who proclaimed to be spiritual Israel and the Israelites in the pagan church didn't make the connection. Nobody is holding the people who deceive them accountable. A great majority of the people trapped in the church are spiritually bound due to the sorcery done to them in the church. Religion is nothing but witchcraft and idolatry. The scriptures made it very clear that the Gentiles make their sacrifice to devils and not to the God of Israel. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. The Most High put his people in a deep sleep and determined when he would wake them up. The Gentiles have been deceived by the Satans in religion. Remember, the Most High placed spirits of authority over the Gentile nations to lead them away from him. The way the Satans led the nations away is through deception. The doctrines of devils taught in the churches deceive many Gentile nations to bow down to the God of this world. The spiritual wickedness in high places took Satan's offer to give them all the kingdoms of this world if they bow down and worship him. The same offer Satan made to the word of God when he was flesh. In exchange for money, power, and control over the world, the Gentiles bow down and worship Satan to obtain all the kingdoms of this world. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan also promised the angels who followed him great kingdoms. 
Israelites, I hope you can now see why the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The nations bow down to worship the God of this world in exchange to control all the kingdoms of this world. That is how they were able to colonize every land on this earth. I don't know how the nations can bow down and worship Satan and believe they will inherit the coming kingdom. They willingly accept Satan's offers, but somehow the heathens believe they will inherit the coming kingdom. I guess the same way many Israelites before they were awakened didn't realize the scriptures was their culture and family history. Likewise, the Gentiles can't recognize themselves in the scriptures. The Satans have truly deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. The Satans deceived some Gentiles into believing they will escape the judgment, the most high reserved for the nations. I wonder to whom do the Gentiles believe the scriptures are referring to when they say, I will gather all nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat to plead with them for his people, the Israelites, they have scattered and parted his land. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. All nations who participated in buying and selling the Israelites are among the nations spoken about in the book of Joel. All nations that participated in scattering the Israelites across the world, the scriptures in the book of Joel is talking about your nations. All who participated in parting the Most High's land, the scriptures is speaking to you. How can the evangelicals claim to be spiritual Israel and your sins are taken away? Yet the scriptures prophesied about a time when the Most High will gather all nations and bring them to the valley of Jehoshaphat. You're clueless of who these nations are. Many Gentiles are patriots. They will do anything for their country. Presently, the Israelites don't have a nation. The Most High removed the Israelites from his presence and scattered his people. The scriptures must be talking about the Gentile nations that participated in the slave trade, all who purchased and sold slaves. The heathens knew exactly who they were purchasing and selling. That is why the day of the Lord is a day of darkness. The heathens knew exactly what they were doing. The Gentiles oppressed the Israelites without a cause. But thus saith the Lord God, my people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. And the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Not only did the Gentiles participate in oppressing and conspiring against the Israelites, some Gentiles refused to acknowledge their involvements and repent of their sins. Today there are heathens making plans to fight against the people of the Most High and the Father. Some Gentiles have been deceived into believing they can defeat the God of Israel. No one can stand against the army of the Most High. Every day, the unrepented Gentiles are blaspheming the Most High. Now therefore, what have I here, saith the Lord, that my people is taken away for naught? They that rule over them make them to howl, saith the Lord. And my name continually every day is blasphemed. As the time for our redemption draws near, the heathens will rage. The kingdoms they obtain by worshiping the God of this world are being threatened. The heathens will do everything in their power to hold on to their kingdoms. The very Gentiles who proclaim to serve the God of Israel in religion are preparing to fight against the God they say they serve. The Most High will make them fight against themselves. Just as we see today, nations rising against other nations. When several heathen nations gathered against Judah in battle, the Most High made them turn the sword on themselves. They started to fight each other instead of attacking the children of Judah. But the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. The day of the Lord is reserved for the Gentile nations who are an enemy to the Most High. The prophecy against the wicked in the scriptures is not speaking to imaginary people. Religion make it seem as if the prophecies against the wicked is not against the kingdoms of this world and their people. Religion made it seem as if everyone will inherit eternal life. 
Religion made many believe everyone who passed away goes to heaven. Yet when you hear the testimony of the people who had near-death experiences, they all seem to have one thing in common. They all died and went to hell. How come none went to heaven like religion proclaimed? Majority of the people who had near-death experiences had some sort of religious affiliation. Yet all of them died and went to hell. Why do you still believe Rome? To the Gentiles, the prophecies against the nations are speaking about your nations. None of the nations are exempt. The Gentile kingdoms had a hand in oppressing the people of the Most High, as well as interfering with the affairs of the Most High. The day of the Lord is when all the Gentile nations will be held accountable for all of their iniquities. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you, seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. The day of the Lord is spoken about throughout the scriptures. As you heard in the scriptures in the book of Zephaniah, the Most High is telling the people to seek righteousness and seek meekness. Despite all the warnings in the scriptures, many will not repent. Some Gentiles will continue to worship the God of this world. The scriptures did say all whose name is not written in the book of life would worship the God of this world in the end times. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Israelites, don't be surprised by the large population of people who reject the truth. The road that leads to life, only a few will find that road. In the end times, sin will increase. Israelites, you shouldn't let the increase of lawlessness discourage you. The scripture said the end times are perilous times. Don't expect a large population of people to become righteous in the end time. Also, don't expect the Gentiles and some Israelites to welcome the truth with gladness. The truth will separate the tares from the wheat. The tares, the children of the wicked one, the wheat, the children of the kingdom, the righteous. You will see a large population of people rejecting the truth. Just as you heard in the scripture in the book of Revelation, the people whose names that are not written in the book of life will worship the God of this world. Israelites, don't become partakers with them. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Many Israelites are expecting a large population of people to repent in the end times. That is false. Sin will increase in the end times. Israelites, as you know, the Gentiles already knew who the true descendants of the Israelites are. The Gentiles knew the graven images of white Jesus was a false image. The scriptures let us know in the book of Maccabees that the heathens inserted themselves into the scriptures as well as their images. The heathens know that the Messiah don't look like them. They had no problem disregarding the Most High that forbid any images to be created. They create an image that resemble them to get you to worship them as well as to control you. The evangelicals were preaching public God loves all people and that they don't see color. When they decided to create an image of the Messiah, they created a false image. Israelites know that if the Messiah looked like the tares, they wouldn't have hanged him on a tree. What white man in history was ever lynched to save humanity? If the Messiah truly looked like them, they would have never hanged him. Throughout history, they did the same thing to the people that resembled the word of God when he was flesh. Many of our ancestors was hung on a tree, and this continued to happen until this day. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Israelites, do you see how the Gentiles deliberately disregard the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High? then turn around and proclaim to be serving the God of Israel. As the truth continues to be a testimony to the nations, the Most High will continue to publicly reject the Gentiles that proclaim to be his people, but are of the synagogue of Satan, as well as the Gentiles that participated in concealing the truth. Today, we see more and more Gentiles confessing and proclaiming that Jesus was black and that the chosen people are the indigenous black people. They have no choice but to confess since the Most High the Father have exposed the truth on a global level. 
If the Most High didn't expose the truth, the Gentiles would have continued in their wickedness. My question to the Gentiles, why now? You knew the truth from the very beginning. You did nothing to correct the problem. Instead of making things right, you conspired against the people of the Most High and altered the scriptures. They have said, come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. But they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. Israelites, know that there will be Gentiles that will not accept the truth. They will continue in the witchcraft and idolatry taught to them by the Satans in the beast system. We have to stop trying to save people that are predestined for the lake of fire. As a people, we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. The Gentiles knew the truth. Despite knowing the truth, they chose to be an enemy to the Most High to serve the God of this world that gave them the desires of their flesh. Remember, the lust of the flesh is not of the Father, but of the Satans. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Although the scriptures prophesied that the times of the Gentiles would come to an end, the Gentiles are having a difficult time understanding this truth. They spent their entire existence believing they have replaced the Israelites. The God they created in religion to give them salvation have taken all of their sins away. They truly thought they would inherit the coming kingdom without being held accountable for all the abominations they have done in this world with the Satans whom they bow down to worship. If the Israelites, the apple of the Most High's eyes, are being punished for all of their iniquities, the fallen angels are held accountable for all of their iniquities. I don't know why the Gentiles seems to believe they will be saved because Jesus took their sins away. The delusion upon all who reject the truth is strong upon them. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Israelites, know that there are some people that are predestined for the lake of fire. This is not hate speech. Not all people is going to make it to the coming kingdom. The Most High predetermined from the very beginning who would inherit the coming kingdom. I'm tired of the synagogue of Satan trying to dumb us down. The truth is the truth. There's no amount of apologies that can make up for the wrong the Gentiles have done to the people of the Most High as well as the Father. That is why it's important that you don't get in the Father's way as he execute his judgments upon the nations. Also, Israelites, it's very important that you don't boast nor allow your heart to be glad and proud when the Most High execute his judgments upon the nations. The scriptures warn us about rejoicing over the downfall of our enemies. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. We must focus on what the Father commands of the end time generation. Allow the Most High to do his will on the earth. As you heard in the scriptures, rejoicing over the downfall of your enemies could cause the Most High to turn his wrath away from your enemies. As the Gentiles rage and the judgments of the nations draw near, humble yourself, seek the face of the Father. We spent our entire life being oppressed. There's no need for us to spend eternity in oppression as well. Israelites, the time have come for you to listen to the Father and welcome the truth he is making available at this time. The scriptures prophesied about a famine that will come that is not of food, but of hearing the word. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. When the raging Gentiles are tired of hearing the truth, they will find ways to stop the truth from spreading. They already created laws to protect the imposters. They are trying to shut down social media platforms. They've shadow banned channels that support and spread the truth. Israelites, make sure you're preparing yourself. Don't be like the foolish virgins that took their lamp but didn't have oil. Seek the Most High, the Father, while he can be found. Allow him to transform you by renewing your mind. 
The Most High is pleading with his people to return to him. Israelites, let go of the idols of the heathens and return to your God. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts.